My name is Will Adair and I'm a consultant radiologist at the University Hospitals of Leicester. CT scanning has lots of benefits. It's a very accurate test for diagnosing many conditions and it's a test which can be quickly organised and is available in many hospitals around the country. CT scanning can also reduce the risk of patients having unnecessary procedures because it can give you a diagnosis without a biopsy or a laparotomy or other surgical procedure for instance. And it's also good for patients because it gives them certainty that they know what is causing their problem and they have a, a diagnosis. The health consequences of CT scanning is that it uses ionising radiation. I think the, the subject is not particularly well covered in medical education, so many doctors are not very well aware of the risks of radiation to their patients from scanning. We know that ionising radiation, particularly in large doses, is harmful and um, it's very difficult to quantify that in many patients because the only data we can use really comes from people who've been victims of nuclear bombs. This data is difficult to extrapolate back to real world because actually the amount of radiation from CT scans and from medical radiation is much, much lower than that from uh, nuclear accidents. Even though we don't know the exact risk for our patients, we do know that over time a small proportion of patients will develop malignancies as a result of being exposed to ionising radiation in medical procedures. It's important doctors know about the risk because there may be an alternative test which gives the patient's diagnosis which doesn't involve using x-ray radiation. And also they need to be able to consent their patients that exposure to a CT scan may cause malignancy many years down the line. So children and women in particular are susceptible because their tissues are growing and their tissues tend to be more sensitive to the effects of radiation and, and damage from radiation. Because of this, children are less likely to be referred for CT scans, but as they get older into adulthood, the chances of clinicians requesting CT scans increases. Here's Pete Thurley, a radiologist at the Royal Derby Hospital, who's looked at the association between using CT scan and patient's age. As you can see, when we examined the rate of CT scan use amongst patients at Royal Derby Hospital, there was a rapid increase from the age of 15 to the age of 19, where there was almost a trebling of the use of CT. This isn't really likely to be due to changes in pathology, but more due to clinician behaviour, with adult physicians much more readily reaching for a CT request form. This is important because these patients are still young and therefore are relatively susceptible to the effects of radiation compared to an older population. I think we can learn from our paediatric colleagues not to request CT scans when there's an alternative investigation we could use to make the diagnosis. So for instance, ultrasound scanning or MRI scanning may give us the same result, uh, but without exposing the patients to ionising radiation. My name is Dr Richard Bowker. I'm a consultant paediatrician and with any test on a child, I have to consider what benefits I'm going to get from the result of that test versus the harms I'm going to create in putting that child through that test. Some tests you might not think of as invasive, such as a blood test, but actually to a toddler that is quite psychologically damaging. When it comes to radiation, that is clearly an invasive test for a child whose lifelong dose of radiation is going to be significantly changed by the fact of doing a, a CT scan. Therefore, if I'm going to put a child through a CT scan, I need to be clear in my own mind that the information I'm going to get from that test is going to benefit the management of that child. I probably had some training in radiation dose at medical school, but more importantly, talking to consultant radiologists and paediatric radiologists is where I get most of my knowledge from. I know that when I put a baby through a CT scan for a head scan, it's equivalent to about 18 months of background radiation. When I consider a CT scan for a diagnostic test, I need to know, am I going to get the information from that test that is going to help me manage the case? First of all, I would ask my radiology colleague, is this the right test? Am I asking the right question or getting the right answer from this test? If the answer is that it can be achieved through something less invasive, such as an ultrasound scan or a plain x-ray, then that's really helpful to have had that conversation. Next, 
I would weigh up whether I really needed to know the information in the first place, or could just watch and wait be another appropriate way of managing the patient. Finally, if I'm going to undertake an invasive procedure, I'll probably involve the parents and the young person in that discussion. They have an understanding of risk, just as I do, and involving them and getting consent from them is important in my mind. I know that adult care has hugely different challenges compared to paediatric medicine, but here's a strategy that can cross the specialties. When considering a test, just stop and think, what information are you trying to get? What positive benefits will you have from doing an invasive test in terms of needing management further forward? Have you discussed the risks with the patient? Have you discussed the information that you'll gain from the person interpreting the test, such as the radiologist? Is there a way of getting the same information in a less invasive manner? Finally, if you are requesting a CT scan or a uh, medical investigation which involves ionising radiation, make sure you select the correct test for the correct patient because if a patient has unnecessary exposure to radiation, this could have consequences for that patient and may need to be reported to the regulatory authorities. In this trust, uh, in the last year, there were seven patients who received an unnecessary uh, CT scan, potentially giving them a long-term risk of malignancy from that investigation. Of course, um, there's also risk in not scanning patients because you might miss an important diagnosis or a patient who's very worried may not get the reassurance that they need. So as a clinician, it's very important to be aware of the risks of radiation so that you can appropriately inform and consent your patients and also to think of alternative investigations which could be used instead.